One of my favorite duets is the one that you did with Rochelle Pharrell. Mm -hmm. How did that? How did that even come about? And what is it like singing with Rochelle Pharrell? Well, uh, it's interesting because initially it was between me and Phil Perry as to who was going to be the other vocalist. Oh, uh, just one of those things, and somehow I went out and singing with Rochelle was. Probably the hardest session I've ever done, but also one of the best sessions I've ever done. What made it hard? She had an exact idea of what she wanted. Okay. And she made sure that I gave it to her exactly <laughs> the way she heard it. I mean, now she was like, oh, no, 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 no. I mean, we were doing a session and I sang something and she said, you need to sing it the way Will Downing would sing it. And I was like, I, 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 I am Will, Will Downing. Downing. That's the way I would. Well, how do you? How did you hear me singing it? No, I need you to take a breath here, and I need you to just like, oh, okay. And I thought it was crazy at first, but then when we heard the final product, I was like, damn, that sounds like Will Downing. Wow, <laughs> wow. So did she? She really kind of pushed you in a yeah. different. Yeah, 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 yeah. We and we worked on that song literally for two days. Wow. Is that like something that's out of the norm? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm used to doing a lead vocal. I mean, a good one that I'm, or a great one that I'm like, okay, I ain't got no problems with it, no regrets. About three hours. Man. Yeah. So that was putting so in two some days, work. like, oh, we say, yeah, when we come back tomorrow, like, tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> so if you guys had to do that just to record it, what is it? What was it like? You know, when you guys uh, performed it live. Um, we would take it to way out there. I mean, mm -hmm. we would obviously do the song and then we would just go with whatever the emotion, you know, mm -hmm. kind of where it led us. The way you felt that yeah. night. Well, you said songs and music are supposed to take you on a journey. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to transport mm -hmm. you. Where do you go when you're on stage performing or versus being in the studio? It depends on where the audience takes you. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're into it, you can. it can really go anywhere. Uh, you know, you take it left. I mean, if they wanted to hear the song exactly like the recording, they would have just stayed home and listened to the recording. Mm -hmm. So when it's live, you know, you got to bring something new to the table. And what is that feeling of of being on stage with, uh, a, you know, just a, a wonderful audience who's coming out to see you, sold out crowd? Oh, was it feel like? Yeah. Um, it's the greatest feeling in the world. Really? When there's folks out there on your side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no feeling like it. When you start singing a song and folks start singing along with you, it's, it's, the, it's the best feeling ever. You know that you did your job, right? And it doesn't get old. Oh, no, no, not like that. Yeah. No, it gets old when folks are sitting there and they got their hand like this and they're just looking at you like, you know, okay, uh, that same thing he sang on the record. Y'all ain't, ain't going on. Ain't gonna... <laughs> so. And what's the difference between singing for people home versus like in Europe or overseas? Um, it's different. Um, I'm not going to say that people here are less appreciative, but I think that people in America are very singles driven. So whatever they hear on the radio constantly mm -hmm. is all they want to hear. Mm -hmm. When you go overseas, like, you know, we've recorded 10 songs sometimes, or 12 songs on an the album. They're into the other yeah. 10 or but eight songs, of, you know, that weren't singles. And we went to South Africa one time and I had like my standard show and, you know, went on radio and they were like, yeah, are you gonna sing, you know, song four or for CD number five? I was like, I said, yeah, which one is that? And I looked at it, I was like, oh, damn, I don't think I've sung this song since I recorded it. And they're like, well, it's a big hit here. And I'm like, you're kidding, right? You have got to be kidding. Yeah. And we had to learn the song that night. Actually, the first night we didn't do it, and people got mad. Really? And then the promoter came up to me and said, hey, man, tomorrow, if you do this tomorrow, you know, they're yeah. going to tear this place apart if you don't do this song. So we had to learn it and do it. Well, that must be a good feeling because I don't think sometimes people realize just how much you put into your music. So the fact that people overseas really can appreciate mm -hmm. that ninth or tenth song, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know. It is a good feeling. feeling. I mean, it's, you know, we spend lots of money on it. I put lots of work into it and to make it what it is. And yeah, it should be appreciated like that.